All right, Luke chapter 9. I'm just going to get some verses from Jesus so we can get the whole picture here that Jesus Christ takes how you live very seriously, okay? The Son of Man must suffer many things, be rejected, be slain and raised the third day. He told him, I'm going to die for your sins. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Take up your cross every day and follow me. Deny yourself. Take up your cross every day. What does that look like, preacher? Deny myself, take up my cross, and follow you every day. What might I do, Lord? If I were to deny myself and take up my cross and follow you, what might I do? He said to go preach in all the world. You might go out and preach. We're just trying to be obedient. We're not making something up here. We're trying to save people every day. For whoever will save your life will lose it. But whoever will lose his life for my sake will, will save it. Are you willing to throw your life away for Jesus and say, Lord, my life is yours. I give it to you. I give up my reputation and my ego. I don't care what they say about me. I'm standing for Jesus. I don't care. Does anybody say that's me? I'm for Jesus. He died for me. I live for Him. That's what salvation is. I thought it was I walked the aisle, then I live like a hypocrite. Your church lied to you. That's a lie from the pit of hell. You walk the aisle and now you live like a hypocrite. It's not Christianity. It's, I live. He died for me. I live for Him and He said so right here. Whoever will save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? For whoever will be ashamed of me in my words, in this sinful and adulterous generation of Him, the Son of Man will be ashamed with His holy angels. Don't be ashamed of Jesus. Let the devil be ashamed of hell. Let the wicked be ashamed of their sin. But you stand up bold for Jesus and say, I don't care what they say. Let the mockers mock on. Jesus saves sinners from hell. He's awesome. Yes. Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? That's what his apostles said. John and James said, should we send down fire and blaze them out, Jesus? But Jesus said, no, that's not the spirit I'm in. I didn't come to destroy their lives, but to save them. He's coming to turn your lives upside down so He can save you. So He can save you. Not so He can dance on your grave, so He can lift you up. Jesus wants to lift you up today. He wants to save you now. He wants you to have peace with God, complete forgiveness, a clear conscience, and joy, 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 because you know the Lord and your eternity is settled because you're right with God and the blood of Jesus Christ washes you from all sin. And the Holy Spirit fills your life and floods you with the glory of God and it's joy unspeakable, folks, and it's never going to end. For those who are in Christ, it's going to be glory, glory, glory forever that never stops, heaven or hell. It's very easy to make this choice if you think about it without the devil fooling you. So he said, he said to another, foxes have holes, the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head, like Angela here. And he said to another, follow me. And he said, Lord, first suffer me to go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, you know what he said? Let the dead bury their dead, but you go and preach the gospel. Woo! Come Amen. on! Amen! Amen! He said, let the dead bury the dead, but you go and preach the gospel. That's what the heartbeat of Jesus is, is you go out and share Jesus with a hell-bound world. Saints, a church kids, Sunday school kids, let the world mock and rage, but you go and preach the gospel. Don't worry about all this stuff, the clutter at home, the busyness of life. You go and preach the gospel. It's not complicated, folks. They brainwashed you at church to think you sit on a pew, you put in the bucket, you go home and watch football or garbage all week, you come back like a hypocrite, and we give you a little sermon again, blah, blah, blah. No, Jesus said get some power from God and go preach the gospel. Mm, it and live for the Lord and stop getting soaked in this world and becoming worldly and world-loving and world-worshipping. Become God-worshipping. Go and preach the gospel, he said. And God will put some fire in your heart. 
when you step out in faith, that if you sit at home and play defense, the devil's going to have you like a dartboard all day long. Don't be the devil's dartboard. Get on the attack and put him in his place and drive the devil out of your college campus. Students of UTC, drive the devil out of this campus in the name of Jesus Christ. With you and God, you can do it. Yes. We'll be gone. We're not here to stay. But it's going to be you that's left to stand up for Jesus. You don't have to like us. It's okay if you don't like us. You need to love Jesus and stand up for Him because we're going to be gone. Jesus tarries. He could be coming back any minute. The better. Any minute. I want you to stand up for Jesus. You don't have to like me to like us. But I want you to love Jesus and stand up for Him. Save some people from hell around here. Okay. No man having put his hand to the plow, looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. God said, send forth. Pray that God would send forth laborers into His harvest. The harvest is great. The laborers are few. He said, if they don't receive you, even the very dust of your feet, wipe off against them. Jesus said to those who wouldn't receive Him, He said, you are of your father the devil. He wasn't watering down anything. Those who rejected Him, He said, you are of your father the devil. In the works of your father you will do. Well, don't get offended. He said that to Peter, too. He said, get behind me, Satan. When we're letting the devil and evil and sin rule us, Jesus says we're letting the devil in our life. He said to them, you're of their father, the devil. He said, Peter, get behind me, Satan. Who's ruling your life, Jesus or the devil? Yes. So he taught them to go out and preach. He prayed, taught them to pray, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Folks, if we don't forgive, we won't be forgiven. I don't know if they taught you that in Sunday school, but if you don't forgive people, God says He won't forgive you. If you don't forgive people, God won't forgive you. You've got to forgive. You have no choice. If you expect God to forgive you, you've got to forgive other people. You have to be forgiving because God's willing to show mercy to you. You have to forgive people. You can't be holding grudges. Let it go and let God wash you clean. Amen. If you being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Do you think if you ask God for the Holy Spirit, He's going to surprise you with a snake? He'll give you the Holy Spirit. God wants to love you. He wants to shower you with blessings. God wants to be your friend and your Savior. He will give you the Holy Spirit if you ask. In faith, God wants to bless you with power to live a life of overcoming. He who some respect for this man. Well, that's good. We don't respect him, man. We expect some respect for these people. Take heed. Yeah. Some of us are actually if Christians. Yeah. For a man's life, it's just yeah. not in the abundance yeah. of things he possesses. Yeah. Right. Right. There was a rich man who said, I've got a lot of stuff. I'm going to build more barns. But God said, you fool. This night your soul will be required of you. Whose will these things be? This night your soul will be required of you. What about you? Is God going to require your soul tonight? That's what kind of God we serve. God might require your soul tonight. Are you ready to stand before God? Alright. I'm talking preaching Luke chapter 12. And you yourself, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where your treasure is, let your heart be also. And you'll be like people waiting for their Lord to return. Waiting for Jesus to return. Are you waiting for Jesus to return? Are you living your life like He's coming back any time now? That's how you should live. Luke chapter 13. I tell you, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. If you don't repent, he's talking about this tower that fell down and crushed people, and crushing people. These people died in catastrophe. Jesus said, unless you repent, you'll all 
Oh, likewise perish. Where is the body of the dinosaur gospel? Where is the God of God? If you repent, you're going to perish. He doesn't know a lot about cartoons. Wait, 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 wait. Jesus preached the hard gospel. What he said, if you don't repent, you're going to perish. All right. I'm going to move on. Did they think that was a sin? Enter in at the strive to enter at the narrow gate. Did they find that sinning? Strive to enter at the narrow gate. Hey, does anybody here love Jesus Christ? Does anybody love Jesus in your own way? Has Jesus, has Jesus changed your life? Required to have that Yeah, yeah. We're not talking about the same thing. Has Jesus changed your life? We are talking about the same It's all right. Does Jesus change your life? Yeah. Hey, hey, Greg. Every single person. Hey, Greg. All right. You're, you're really cutting a thin slice there. In some way, Jesus really. I think he has. Has Jesus changed my God. Hello, Miss Cummings. How are you today? Has Jesus changed? I am doing lovely, sir. Has nobody here been changed by Jesus Christ? Nobody? Oh, no, 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 no. 